Okay, so now we just have to... That wasn't supposed to happen. Things are going very wrong. Ah! This is really bad. Hello, everybody. My name is Bloody Hellvader. Yes, we are at it yet again with Spire Knights. We're almost finished with the main game bosses. As you may have noticed, my audio is now clearer than ever. It took a while to get what I needed to make a proper audio recording setup. But it looks like it's paying off now, as now you can hear me louder and clearer than ever. No more scratchy or muffled audio. Like I said before in my Romulus Twins boss fight video, even if the audio is scuffed, I'll be leaving the videos up, as I want to show this as a sign of growth for this channel, and I'm glad to see it eventually happen. This is only the starting point of this channel's growth, ladies and gentlemen. I'll continue towards upgrading my recording equipment as needed as I upload more videos at a more frequent and consistent rate. This is good. I'm looking forward to see how this channel grows as time marches on. It's funny, it's a little bit past noon at the time of recording this. So breakfast was a few hours ago, and yet here I am, waffling. So anyways, back to Spiral Knights. The weapon loadout that I'll be using for the Firestorm Citadel is a combustor and a blitz needle. The combustor for strong elemental damage with the ability to do burn damage by setting enemies on fire. However, most of the enemies here are immune to fire, but we can make them take extra damage from the pushing effect of the charge attack. The blitz needles for dealing piercing damage against the wolves, trojans, and any enemies that we can't deal with our combustor alone. As well as the final boss of the stage, Vanaduk. If I'm correct, these types of weapons are considered staple weaponry for surviving the Firestorm Citadel and for fighting Vanaduk, the endgame boss. For my armor loadout, I'll be using a Chaos Cowl and Chaos Cloak with a Grey Owlite Shield. The Chaos Cowl and Cloak allows me to have a medium charge time reduction and a medium damage bonus. However, we are more vulnerable now to status conditions like fire and shock status effects, and the Grey Owlite Shield for protection against fire and shock status effects. So technically, we're a glass cannon, meaning we dish out more damage, but we can't really handle too much damage coming to us. I do believe that the positives from the bonus outweigh the negatives. So most of the battles with the smaller mobs will be shortened, Otherwise, this video would be significantly longer. Also, we're not going to be fighting Vanaduke this video. It'll be the next video. Otherwise, this video would be twice the duration. That's nice. We just got a piece of equipment from a prize box. It's a firebreak helm. It's not that good. But it's nice to see that we got this drop. I have a feeling that this is going to be a good run. So this room with all the buttons and bringing the sprites home is actually my favorite level in this Firestorm Citadel because there's no team buttons. Meaning, if you're here with friends, you can all split up and take care of a room of your choosing. And there's plenty of loot to earn in this level. It's great for farming heat, orbs, and money. Unfortunately, there will be no one joining us for this. So we'll just have to manage what we have at the moment. So for the first room, we press a button, beat up all the baddies, and repeat until the key's unlocked.
and bring this little one home. This next room, we beat up all the enemies. Watch out for the Trojans. If you're not prepared, these two can easily gang up on you and ruin your day. Now we bring Junior back to the base camp. So for this room, the first few seconds had to be cut because I forgot that you needed to defeat the Trojan first and tried to fight the zombies instead. My bad. So defeat the Trojan, wipe out everything here for more loot. Time to go home, lad. For this room, get to the end, fight some zombies, get the key, and make your way back without getting squashed by a wheel, or running into a Shadowfire Square, or even worse, lagging into a Shadowfire Square, and or spikes. Come on, buddy. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. For this room, hit the switch and defeat everyone and get the key. Come on, Junior. So this room is kind of fun. Defeating all the enemies while avoiding this spinning... this spinny thing. Come on, buddy. Let's go home. Next room. We wipe out everyone. That is all. Let's get moving, you. Finally, the last room. The Rocket Puppy Room. This one can go either way, as either the hardest or the easiest, depending on if you know the tricks or have an elemental ranged weapon. Thankfully, we did it correctly. 
So we'll be done in no time. Time to go home now. Let's get our loot and head to the next level. So if you're curious on what had happened to cause such a drastic change in microphone audio quality, then originally I was using a USB snowball mic. It was alright for what it was. After realizing how bad the audio was on the Minecraft video, I thought something had to change. So I had to do some research and find a non-USB mic, along with a decent mixer or audio interface. After watching multiple YouTube videos, explaining what to and what not to use, I eventually settled for a condenser microphone with an audio interface that could suit my needs. The price that was paid to get this level of quality was definitely worth it. And here we are today, with the newly upgraded audio equipment. So you should expect all upcoming videos to have at least clear commentary now. At first, I was afraid that this might be a waste of money. When I listened to the recording of my voice from the USB mic, and from the new microphone, the difference was like night and day. I was taken aback and realized that it wasn't necessarily me that was sounding bad. It was the USB mic. Whether or not you believe me is entirely up to you, but I must say that it was a pleasant surprise to hear my own voice in such a manner that I didn't have to metaphorically perform surgery on it via audio editing software. It's a very welcome surprise and a very welcome addition to the audio equipment setup. I know it's about halfway into this video, but I've run out of things to say, so I'll just squeeze this in. I hope you're enjoying this video, 
And if possible, leave a like, subscribe, and share this video if you're able to. It'd really help out in helping this channel grow into something more than just some random gaming channel. So this is a trick that I learned years ago from another Spire Knights player. If I put these revival totems like this, I should be able to stop the Trojans from bothering me while I deal with these other enemies, and then afterwards I'll deal with the Trojans. It's great if you need some help with crowd control and are in this level alone. Just make sure that you can fit right through, at least two sides of the totems, otherwise you'll get stuck. Finally, the last room. This one can either be really easy or really tough depending on how great you are at crowd control.
Okay, so now we just have to... That wasn't supposed to happen. Things are going very wrong. Ah! This is really bad. I'm surprised that we managed to survive this without dying. Thankfully for us, the AI was being a bit silly for the last Trojan. Let's collect our loot and prepare to fight Vanaduke on the next video. Because that fight lasts somewhere over 10 minutes. As this will actually be the first time I actually fight Vanaduke alone. As my previous solo Vanaduke runs always end up with me lagging into Shadowfire and dying. So that's why this video will be split into two different parts. So I'll see you in the next video. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share the video to help this channel grow. That's all I can share with you for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching.